So I finished my 2016 sketchbook ahead of time and this flip through is a big thank you for hitting 4,000 subscribers. So here we go and we kick off with December uh, 20, 2015. So here we go, um, I use my sketchbooks quite like a uh, scrapbook a lot of the time, sticking things in as well as drawing things in. And here you can see a Christmas Starbucks thing that I hope to use as a reference at some point. Then the last thing that I planned in my previous sketchbook, which was the 1000 subscribers thank you, uh, and that was just stuck in there so I had an idea of what I did at the end of the last sketchbook. And then some of the first things in this one, is a graffiti logo design uh, for the uh, the band Stone Temple Pilots. So unfortunately, their lead singer passed away about this time last year, and I thought I would do a tribute graffiti to them based on all of the albums and all of the ideas. The first album was called Core, so I tried to incorporate that into the graffiti design. So these are all of my drawings, all my little ideas. Again, a few more over here, looking at classic graffiti letters and so on, trying to figure out how I'm going to put all the letters together, but also include all the ideas that I want to include. Haven't got around to the coloring stage yet, so I'll see what I can do with that one. Still want to do it. This is an idea for a friend who asked me if I could do some caricatures of their children and then do them in a sort of superhero style. And they wanted it by Christmas last year and I just didn't have the time to get it done. So this is pretty much about as far as it got. I think there might be an ink sketch of him as Robin hanging around somewhere. So I'll try and find that at some stage. Then we got the uh, Andy Murray video that I did. I think one of the last videos that I did for Letrasets channel last year. So I was drawing Andy Murray in Pro Markers, and this is a rough version of him, first of all, uh, looking at how I'm going to do the flesh tones, some of the reflected lighting effects, and some of the background. So there's the reference photo that I was using. And uh, there is the final piece. That's what it looked like when it was done. And over here, we got some designs for a friend who wanted uh, a sort of banner for his Facebook page to do with um, sort of motorcycle engineering or workshop. And... Here you've got the actual banner and then the square where the profile picture would go. If you've ever seen a Facebook page, then that's the kind of layout. And it's just looking at different ways that I might put the lettering and also this little sort of cartoon figure pulling a wheelie. Again, some more of the bike kind of ideas. This time to fit inside a sort of profile square, um, which obviously all of the social media and stuff wants these days, you know, your little profile pick in a square. So these are based around ideas for motorcycles, including motorcycle engineering bits, wrenches, and so on. And also incorporating some ideas from sort of um, tattoos and so on. So you've got this kind of banner unrolling at the top there and over here down the sides to give it that kind of like tattoo vibe. And over here is more stuff that's kind of influenced by um, biker tattoos um, because he also gave me a bike frame. And the long term idea is to get that decorated um, white pen on, on the black frame with all of these ideas. So you've got a rose here with the petals coming off and then they become oil and then that becomes fire. You've got skulls, black widows, bits of gears, cobwebs, stars. This rose here with the sort of thorns eventually morphing into barbed wire. So lots of little ideas that I would then draw onto the bike using, you know, some kind of paint pen. Um, Got to get around to that. Here you go with uh, pigment markers. This is the second pigment marker picture that I did in January last year. Still trying to get to grips with the marker. It's very expressive, very rough. And I kind of hope that it would blend a little bit more. But I've got a bit better at blending them over the year. But that was just like my second attempt. Lovely and bright with just the yellow and the red that I had. So I think that's just two colors, maybe a bit of white um, uh, pigment marker pen in there somewhere as well. Here I was doing the picture of Batman and I was doing it on some toned paper. So these are just testers showing the different white pencils that I might use and how they were going to react and also the green pencils that I was going to react. So I always keep swatches in my sketchbook because they're good to refer to at a later date. Uh, on the next page, some ideas for Valentine's. Just mucking about, just experimenting again with the pigment markers, uh, in particular colors, and this time really trying to use the white blender pen and seeing how it would work, you know, when colors left on the white blender and then you work it into the paper, you get this lovely ghostly sort of soft effect. Uh, but you can also get this really nice strong effect from just doing regular uh, pigment marking. You know, the colors are so strong with them. So just some ideas, just mucking about with some bits and bobs. Uh, and then here you can see some more ideas for the Valentine's card video that I made uh, back in February. And uh, you can see designs for, you know, some of the patterning that I might decide to do. This is on, again, toned paper, seeing how that would look. And then watercolor paper using paints and also Posca markers. And I think those two actually were in the video that I did eventually. So those two got translated to the final 
piece. <laughs> That's just a little sketch of my daughter when she was eating and she was still wearing her Tommy tippy bib. It's just me mucking about like a little caricature. And she loves Octonauts, so I have a long-term idea to do um, a sort of Octonauts idea that fits within a sort of circle, like a medallion, and it would involve Quasi and his uncle Calico Jack. But uh, that's just a rough idea at the moment. Trying to fit everything into a circle is not as easy as I thought it would be. Now, I talked about the bike idea earlier, and these are some more um, bits and bobs for that. These are some of the bike parts and how I might decorate them. Just looking at ideas, looking at layouts, looking at some stuff that works and maybe some stuff that doesn't. So again, you've got the Black Widow spider, angel wings, checker pattern, um, splattering. Uh, and over here, some of the barbed wire and skulls. Not too pleased with that skull. <laughs> I want to redo that in some way. Bike chains again. And these are just white Posca pen on top of um, blue paper. Uh, moving on, we've got looking again with the pigment markers. <laughs> in January, February, I'd only just gotten the pigment markers, so I was well into using them and experimenting with them quite a bit. And this was sort of an experiment as to could I do black outlines first and then work over them with the pigment marker? And what you can see down here is virtually every black um, kind of outlining thing that I have that I tried to use would smudge when I put the color over it afterwards. The only one that didn't was a black biro, just like a regular big biro. So that was something good for me to, you know, refer to for the future. So this is just me looking at a kind of background for some graffiti work. And on the next page, that's the actual graffiti that I did from it. So it's just a bit of using the Windsor and Newton, who actually make the pigment markers, using their sort of initials and doing a, a graffiti based on that. And for this one, after I'd done the pencil lines, I went over the pencil lines with Biro, then did this blue background all over and then did the black outlines you can see around the letters, the white um, edging, the highlights, and the pink bits as well. So all of that was done afterwards, and the biro allowed me to still see the lines. Over here is an idea for a Valentine's card. Uh, sort of logo, maybe do that next year, the idea of the, the, the question mark inside the heart. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a bit too simple. Don't know. Um, I always keep um, the sort of testers and swatches and working out that I try. So these are some of the workings out using the pigment markers and the white pigment marker before I went ahead and did the actual finished magnolia from that. Over here, another swatch for the white iris. Like I said, always keep them, always good to refer to at a later date. And here is a, uh, I got a stack of research pictures in my little studio. And every now and again, I realize I got too much and I've really got to do some of those sketches. Um, so it's stuff that I like, the style that I like, something that looks really good and I want to, you know, learn how to do that. So these are by Humberto Ramos who is a comic book artist who's done stuff like uh, Spider-Man and X-Men and so on. And uh, here's a couple of my versions of drawing his stuff. This one's going to be a marker eventually. These two are in uh, Pro Marker, just looking at flesh tones and also how to get this lovely big fat reflection, the white manga type reflection in the eyes and how that can work. Looking over here, I knew I wanted to do a background to some of my ink pieces, but I didn't know what to use. So here I did a comparison between Quink Ink and Payne's Grey, and ended up using Payne's Grey because it's got that lovely grey-blue kind of feel, but Quink also has this kind of blacky, browny, yellowy kind of look, but what I was finding with that was that was staining the paper quicker than I could blend it, whereas the Payne's Grey watercolour was a lot more easy to use, and I was okay using that, um, so that's one of the reasons why I chose it. Over here we got Akuma from Street Fighter, and again, I like this reference picture hanging around in my studio for a year or so, and I love the hair, and I really wanted to have a go at doing that, using markers and using um, white pencil for the highlights, and then it didn't show up strong enough, so I used a white Pentel Signo gel pen on top to make those highlights in the hair stronger, and there's a video for that on my channel. I'll put all the links to some of the videos that um, I talk about here in the description below. More swatches for the daffodil picture. Sometimes when you've worked with markers and you can see the markers gone through the page, there's not much you can do on that next page, that facing page. So I often find that I stick things on this page um, to cover over the marker stuff that's leaking through. This was uh, the rough that I did for my three marker challenge, USB man. So I was working out how I was going to use the three markers that I'd chosen and also how I was going to do some of the uh, highlighting. Ugh, not very good, but I like the other highlighting, so I did decide to go ahead and use that. So it's looking at whether I would blend the markers or whether I would do streaky kind of shading instead. Uh, what else we got here? 
This is a picture of a rose done using a calligraphy pen. So you've got that really big flat mark and then you tilt the pen on its side, you get that super razor thin line as well. Uh, and I just had a picture from a magazine that I liked and I thought, oh, I'll have a go at drawing that. And it was a bit sketchy and rough anyway because I hadn't used the thing in ages. So the ink had sort of dried in and it took quite a while to get working properly again. And it was a bit skippy and a bit rough and sketchy, but that actually suited uh, the pitch that I was trying to do. And I think that's no penciling out. I think that's just um, drawn straight with the calligraphy pen onto the paper. Here is a picture by a famous comic book artist again called Bill Sinkavich. And uh, he's done so many great things from the 80s up until now. And he's got a really fine art style of doing his comic book sketching. And I always love this picture of the Phoenix from the X-Men, um, you know, turning into the Phoenix, becoming a bit evil. Uh, and his kind of sketchy shading and these lovely colors. And I'd done the coloring on this years and years ago. And last year I pulled it out and thought, I've really got to finish that. Um, so I got a Sharpie out and I just did all of the black um, shading and hatching here using a, a sharpie and then used a little bit of marker in the eyes and just to get some definition in the teeth. So really glad I got that finished, glad I put the uh, the shadows on that, really needed it. A bit more calligraphy painting, uh, sorry drawing with the calligraphy pen, again drawn on the spot, no penciling out first of all in a coffee shop which is why some of the ellipses and stuff here might be a bit wonky, might not be quite right but Pleased with that, considering it's what, about 30, 30 minutes drawing? Oh, it was a hot chocolate, not coffee. Over here, some uh, designs from Zelda, the Wind Waker front cover. Really like the way that the waves looked in this sort of like light blue to dark blue and this kind of um, almost sort of Greek pattern kind of thing going on. So I thought, oh, well, I'll pop that in the sketchbook for future reference. Here's a really horrible picture of a rose. <laughs> There are some ideas that I just jot down every now and again for different camera angles and ways that I'm actually going to shoot some of my videos if I could move the camera a bit, um, which is probably why I don't end up using those because the camera is pretty much on a fixed arm. But I do want to look into sort of a bit more motion in my videos. A bit more swatches for the watercolor beginners video that I did just in there. Keep those good examples. Um, these are the sprites, the magic sprites from Brave. If you've seen the Disney movie Brave, um, Merida, the heroine in it, she gets led to the witch's cottage by these little blue sprites that appear. Uh, so I thought, oh, they look fun. So I'll have a, a go at doing those. And it's just single color. It's just azure color, azure blue, with a white blender. And also trying to use the chisel tip to get these rather big, fat, chunky kind of lines and blends on there. So that was a bit of fun. There is my rough for the Captain America picture that I did in pigment markers. And um, I thought it looked too much like Benedict Cumberbatch, the guy from Sherlock and Doctor Strange. Uh, not at all like Chris Evans, the actual actor that plays um, Captain America. So I had to make various changes from this to the other piece. But this was really good for figuring out the colors and the tones that I was going to use on the actual one that I videoed. And again, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, get, again, another swatch for my yellow tulip picture, looking at how the colors were going to blend together, how I was going to use them. Always keep those. Then I got asked to do some promotional work for the uh, Windsor & Newton inspired by ProMarker Challenge where they took their Griffin template, broke it down into some really simple kind of lines and then you had to use that as a starting point to produce a drawing and then send it off to them. I think it was on Instagram. And you had a chance at winning all their markers if you did a really good creative kind of piece. So they asked would I do some promo as examples of you know possibly what you could do. Um, so that was idea one that might look familiar to you. So the idea of the knight and the raven, again, built around all of the um, the, the lines from the, the template. Then the second idea was more like a sort of really um, exaggerated ninja kind of face kind of style. But I wanted to do something quite different to what was on there. So that was idea number two. Idea number three should look familiar. <laughs> it's Mystic Desert with the, the Emerald City. And here's me working out some of the kind of Klimt-esque swirly kind of patterns that I might use to do the sand. And that was idea four. I think I was running out of ideas at that stage. Um, and this is all of the idea, um, sketching, stuff that I write down, swatches, all the kind of prep work that then went into um, making this one, where you can see I use different colors, first of all, and also had a moon in this one, a couple of different ideas for moons that maybe I should have put in the final piece. And also the swatches and ideas for uh, this one which is the figure with the uh, the scales, the snake scales and so on. It's the knight and then the ravens in the foreground and how I might color that in. So again, just roughs, but give me an idea on the colors that I'm going to use. 
Here we go, we've got a, a, um, a drawing that came about when I was doing some felt tip work with my daughter and I just decided I'd draw a dragonfly and I thought that's kind of a cool idea. I might translate that into something more at some stage. So here it is framed within a lily pad. And the idea for the wings here came from watching her Tinkerbell movies because uh, in the Tinkerbell movies, all of the fairies have a sort of spiral and sort of little dash design on their wings and they're all different. So it's almost like fingerprints for each of the fairies. This is an idea that came about after watching The Hunger Games. So this is, would be a rough idea with the sort of backs of the arrows also becoming trees, the flowers. And this would be Katniss in the center and she is the hanging tree, if you will. And you've got the three um, dead characters sort of hanging down from her. Um, so coin, snow and unfortunately prim. So that's an idea that I might do in inks at some stage. Got to get round to it. This is a third idea that I was asked to do for the um, Winsor Newton Inspired by Promarker Challenge. So really different this time, not at all with the figures and that kind of fantasy, much more floral, much more the kind of stuff that I've been doing a lot of in the last year. So really got my teeth into that one, enjoyed doing that one. An idea where I flip the template uh, for the Winsor Newton Challenge on top of itself. So sort of mirrored it a little bit, see how that might work if I was going to do anything like that. Nothing really came of that, but just an idea that I had. There's some of the color tests for the, the flower picture that I did, the Inspired by Promarker one. Looking at the different shades of brown that I might have used in the earth. And uh, over here, there's just a, a simple pick of how it actually ended up looking. And I'll put a link. Oh, no, I didn't video that one. <laughs> so I won't put a link for that one. You just can see it there. Here are some of my uh, ideas for using the Winsor Newton watercolor sticks that are like sort of watercolor in a sort of pastel stick kind of form. Uh, so I did some on, on different papers using different brushes for a video on this. And the video for this, I can put a link for below because it does exist. Uh, and I was just working out how they would work. Would I like using them compared to regular watercolors or not? A few more swatches using the Colorless Blender which are pigment markers. So I did a comparison video here and this one was using the colorless blender and this one was using the white blender. And I, even though the colors are a little bit dulled on this one, I preferred using the white blender to the colorless one. A few more swatches, a few more scribbly ideas, how to maybe do the petals a little bit more differently. Uh, and then I really got into doing some more of my graffiti research, hanging around, loads of little pictures that I like and I wanna learn how to do graffiti in that style. So. This was just me using markers, fine liners, and watercolor pencils to try and do some of those ideas in here. So I've got a record and I've worked my way through it. So I've got an idea of the techniques that I would use if I was doing this myself. So a few of those. There's Diagoro from my uh, Lone Wolf and Cub uh, research for that particular video. This is a really nice reference photo that I like from some packaging from a store over in Britain called Marks and Spencer. And they package their um, chocolates in this lovely watercolor drippy, splatty, runny kind of effect. So what I was going to do is stick a watercolor piece of paper this side and have a go at doing that. And I will do, you can see June 2016. I've just been a bit sidetracked since then, easily happens. So over here, got some more graffiti pieces, trying to do different letters each time and different color schemes and different patterns. So I'm not just repeating the same kind of uh, piece again and again and again. And again, these are all using markers and um, watercolor pencils and uh, fine liners for the blacks. And then a little bit more um, research, uh, Ito from Lone Wolf and Cub, just looking at how his sort of mean face looks and some of the shading on his top before I went ahead and did that video of me and my daughter looking like Ito. Um, this is the idea that I did for the rose of sort of doing it in a graffiti kind of style. So here are some of my workings out before I actually went ahead and did the other one. This one has a shadow on it like graffiti, which I didn't actually do in the final piece. And now looking at it, I wonder why I didn't because I quite like it. <laughs> and over here are some color tests looking at different background color combinations and different color combinations and splatter effects on the rose versus not. So I had an example of what it would look like if I colored it just shading normally and what it would look like with the white highlights and the um, splatter kind of effect. So I've got that comparison all in one place instead of on two different pieces of paper. Um, a little bit more just looking at using arrows and making some of the petals into arrows. Some more graffiti examples, again using markers and sometimes fine liner and sometimes um, the watercolor pencils as well to give it a bit of texture, a bit of blending. A picture of guacamole that I am going to do with Marcus at some point because I really love the greens. <laughs> again, that's just torn out of a magazine. The slug guy sweeping the floor from Monsters Inc. 
um, which I did using a brush pen that was slightly running out. So it's a bit like when your Sharpie's running out and you're using that and you get this kind of half tone gray tone uh, instead of full on black. And, and that looked pretty good. I was quite pleased with the way that that worked out. So I'd like to do some more stuff with running out brush pens if I can. <laughs> um, more swatches for the various flower videos that I've been doing um, this year. A couple more there. Uh, the blue iris fail that really didn't go the way it should have done, but I keep it anyway because it's good to remind myself of what I did and why it went wrong. Um, my daughter got a My Little Pony toy over the summer and this was some of the packaging on it that I thought was really, really quite cool, really bright and colourful and decorative. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll get that sketched out because I might use that um, in some kind of later design, design piece of work. And here we go, another piece of... Um, uh, graffiti done with just markers and fine liners. Also a bit of white Posca pen for the highlights and the little flashes. A few more swatches, working out ideas for the um, Blue Iris background video. And then I got asked to do a fourth design for Inspired by Pro Marker. Uh, and this one was supposed to be completely different to the others, really abstract and really colorful. So this was the first design I came up with. Then that was the second design. And uh, this design was the one that they liked, but they felt it was too curvy and they wanted me to make some of these curved shapes a bit more angular, a bit sharper. So what I did was I took this, redrew it, and then started to make it a bit sharper, a bit more angular all around the edges. Kept in some curves because obviously you need that, con that contrast between uh, curved lines and, and straight lines. But that's the way that it ended up going and that's the one that I ended up colouring. And you can see the video, I'll put a link for that below. And then we're into October, so these are all ink pictures for the Inktober challenge that I miserably managed only 22 days out of 31. I did the best that I could, I was kind of busy. Um, and uh, this is a metal stag sculpture that I took a photo and then decided to do with the Faber-Castell brush pen, so looking at texture as well as dark and light with just like the pen. Nice building silhouette. Bit more graffiti, again, swirly, looking a bit different to maybe some of the stuff I've done before. A redesign of the band Yellow Cards logo, just me mucking about, just having a bit of fun. You know, a 10, 20 minute sketch and then a bit of color. Um, but yeah, I quite like that one. Might work on that one again sometime. Tropical fish from the local place where um, me and my daughter will go and visit and have a little look at the tropical fish. Take photos of them as always. <laughs> Another metal sculpture, this time done with fine line pen instead of a brush pen. Uh, and it was kind of like a lady, but it's all these little sort of um, strips of metal that have been welded together. A really, really cool sculpture. It's in a place nearby called Telford. Then we got King Triton from The Little Mermaid and uh, decided to do this one with brush pen and then also um, color it in with some, you know, uh, flesh tones and just simple marker coloring just for a bit of practice. Another graffiti design, which I haven't quite got around to finishing in any way yet, but that's the <laughs> rough idea to begin with. Uh, then we've got a tree. This is Inktober again, a tree that looks a bit like a face, like one of the Ents from Lord of the Rings. And Blueberry Cheesecake, which is done with black brush pen, but some of these highlights are done with the white Posca pen as well. Afterwards, pop those in. Then we've got some more Inktober. Green Ursula from uh, Little Mermaid again. Black Shortcake, who is a gangster, allegedly. Um, this one, I had creative block and this is what came out of it. The light bulb for ideas, but the light bulb is looking very angry and annoyed and electricity is going everywhere. A uh, picture of Frank Grillo, the character actor from the, uh, the Purge movies. Um, and I need to do that one again because I don't think I got it quite right. Got the eye, but I messed up his nose and some of the other proportions on the face. So I might have another go at that later on in the year. Uh, some more Inktober stuff, so some fungus that I saw out when I was um, walking, took a photo of that, and a beetle, took a photo of that, and then I come back and I use the photos on my phone to do these sketches from. That's with fine line pen, that's with a brush pen, cable from the X-Men. And uh, this was a really nice little logo that we saw, which was to encourage people to build dens in the woods with um, their children, so they're like the adult and child kind of there, and then they're building this, this little den. Uh, and I thought that was a really cute little graphic. Uh, so I thought I'd do a sketch of that. Then I've got a sketch from the Georgia O'Keeffe exhibition that I was really lucky to go to in London, looking at all of her paintings and some of her early work. And this is one I hadn't seen before, really abstract, you know, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Did a quick sketch of that. And then over here, another tree that looks a bit like a rather scary face. So it's probably just right that I was doing that for Inktober and Halloween. And then you're at the end of the sketchbook. So I've actually finished the sketchbook in a year, which is something that I don't usually do. And here are just some rough bits of reference that I'm going to use at some point, and they just hang around in the back of the sketchbook until I get a chance to actually use them. But that is 
my 2016 sketchbook finished ahead of schedule. So this is my thank you to the 4,000 out there. All of those subscribers that keep asking questions, making comments, making suggestions, everything that keeps me super motivated to keep producing videos from a channel that I can share with you. So thank you so much for all of that. And also I think 100 videos is coming up in about eight or nine videos time. So if you've got any suggestions for a special 100th video idea, then please leave a comment below. And if you like this tour through my most recent sketchbook, you might want to take a little tour through one of my old sketchbooks, one from the early 1990s when I was just still studying at school. I'll post a link for that below so you can check that out. Thanks so much for watching this one.